Hello everyone, this is YLAM here. In today's video, I want to talk about capturing slow motion. So on the X-T3, you can do it at 1080p at 120 frames per second, or you can do it at 4K at 60 frames per second. Ever since the X-H1, I've been recording at 120 frames for quite a while now, and I really do enjoy using it. It's really great on the cameras. Now, since that I've got the X-T3, I also have the option to go 4K 60. So I've been playing around with that a little bit to see what is better and which one should I use. And I've got a couple of interesting things to report, specifically if you're actually producing content on YouTube, because the camera actually gives you this option, there's actually some pros and cons to both of them. So I want to go into a little bit about that. This is not a video about pixel peeping, about looking at artifacts or anything. This is more about looking at the picture and getting what use you can out of both these features because they are definitely welcome tools when you're actually making videos. So let's go ahead and talk about 1080 first. Obviously, if you're recording slow motion at 120 frames per second at 1080p, it's great if you're actually producing 1080p video but if you're producing 4K video, you're obviously going to have to upscale that four times in order to get 4K video. And this could be a problem for some people. What I'm generally finding is that when I'm upscaling 1080p to 4K is that there is a noticeable difference, especially when it's on your computer. But once you upload it to YouTube and it goes through their compression process and then you replay it back on your screens, the differences aren't as noticeable as you think, mostly because of the compression and whatever YouTube does. I'm guessing that their bitrate is so low that it kind of just muddies things a little bit, enough to where I think you can get away with a lot of 1080p video upscale to 4K. At least that's my opinion. What I find is that when I'm recording 4K 60 and then I'm slowing it down by half, the video looks great, but again, once I upload it to YouTube, I find that the YouTube compression kind of evens it out to where everything is a little bit meh and a little bit muddy. So I think it's fine, but the general audience uh, definitely chime in on this. I'm going to have clips of 1080 and 4K throughout this video. So tell me what you think and what you see as you're going through these clips, because I would really like to know. So let's continue on with the discussion now. At 120 frames per second, depending on if you're actually using it for 30p or 24p, you're slowing it down four to five times. That is a significant amount of times. And what I find is that when I'm using 1080p 120, I'm very free to actually walk around with my camera and record that motion. And it's gonna look pretty smooth. I mean, you can't be blatant about it, but it does allow you to move around with your camera, even without image stabilization like the X-T3, and it still makes it look very good. As long as you don't have real jerky motions, the video overall is just gonna look very good and very natural, which is something that I like. What I find with 4K60 is that any type of walking movement pretty much leaves unusable. You're really stuck with pans and tilts and shifts, and that's gonna look really good. Or if you're on a moving vehicle, you can do 4K 60 and just let the vehicle move and provide that slow motion. But any type of walking, I find that it's very unusable. So in general, what I'm trying to say is that at four times slow motion, it's much more forgiving. You're just going to get a whole lot more video on it. And plus, you gotta remember, you're slowing it down four times, which means your timeline stretches by four times. So getting a three second clip is really getting a 12 second clip so you don't really need a long clip in order to get a nice slow motion clip you only need a few seconds and that's really good enough for your b-roll which you can easily get most of the time now on the flip side the benefits to 4k 60 is that you're kind of future proving your videos right now most people are fine with 1080 and also 4k but as we move into the future obviously 4k is going to take over and then 1080 is going to look upon as something that's going to be inferior. At that moment, the people that are actually producing 4K videos, your videos are probably going to last longer. And I'm willing to bet that the YouTube search engine results is going to promote 4K videos more than the 1080p videos. That's just bound to happen because people want quality. And as internet speeds get a lot higher, I'm thinking that's what's going to happen in general for almost all content searches. Another obvious benefit, and it's not something that you're going to see online, is that if you're actually presenting this video on a computer, 
it's much better to present 4K 60 video because you can actually see the difference when it's actually on your laptop and you're playing it back on a high quality monitor as opposed to streaming over the internet. I just find that streaming over the internet kind of evens things out a little bit, but definitely if you're actually presenting on a laptop, you would want to go with a 4K 60 option almost every time. You can do bits of slow motion like, you know, short three to five second bursts in which the user doesn't have time to pick up on the quality differences, but I would definitely recommend 4K in that type of scenario. Now, really the last thing to talk about is actually the lenses when it comes to using slow motion. This right here is my 55 to 200. And what I love about this lens for some reason is that I can actually do very good zooming pulls at slow motion because I can just get that very smooth zoom. And I don't have many lenses that I can do that on. I actually just grab the lens like this and then I very slowly twist and I can get a very nice zoom in and zoom out, especially in bright sunlight in which the aperture is open all the way. And it's just super useful. This is one of the big reasons why I love the 55 to 200 is that I can do slow motion zooms and it's really nice and smooth. I don't get it right every time and it's not going to be as good as a digital zoom, but still I'm really impressed with this lens's capability of doing that. And I'm really happy with a lot of the results that I've been getting with that. For various reasons, there's a lot of other lenses in the Fuji lineup. I don't really have as good as results as the 55 to 200, but it's definitely one of my favorites and it's compact enough to where I can actually walk around with it or have it with me whenever I want to use it. I will say though, at 1080p, it's definitely much more forgiving. Again, that four times slow motion is going to forgive a lot more things, whereas on 4K, you really have to be spot on in order to get a slow zoom. I've been trying to master it for quite a while now and still really haven't gotten the knack of it. Definitely worthwhile trying if you actually have a couple of these zoom lenses to see how smooth of a motion you can get while recording video. That's all I have to say for this video. Definitely let me know what you think about the slow motion between the 60 and the 120. Can you see a visual quality difference on YouTube? I don't notice a difference, but then again, I've been staring at my own videos for a very long time and it just kind of all looks the same to me at a certain point. So I would love the feedback on that. That's all I have to say for this video. Hope you have a good day and I will see you on the next one.